Okay. I put some chips in it. Scuffed it up. Got some wear and tear on the back with my DA. And you're probably saying to yourself, why did he do that if he's gonna paint it? Well, let me tell you why I did it. Because that's gonna have definition to it, see? That's gonna have character where those chips are, okay, and all that, you see? When I paint over it, you're gonna be able to see all that. It's gonna give it that, you know, dimensional look that it's an old guitar. So I'm taking some wet, dry, wet sand 400. And if you want to sand it quicker, okay, don't use your hand, just your hand, because you're only going to be sanding it with your fingers. It's better to use a block, that way you're covering it, and you save a lot of material, and uh, it's just a you know, better operation, and you're sanding it a lot quicker. So now what I'm going to do, see if I'm sanding it with a block, if I sand it with a block, I'm hitting all the way. Now I'm going to go ahead and get this wood. You can see that right there. Okay. But you see what the block does? It hits the whole surface. Whereas it just use your hand, what you're doing is you're just hitting it with your knuckles. And it's not really sanding. Just make sure you okay. get the air to block. You can sand it ten times faster. And we're going to tape this off with some tape before we paint it. We, really, we don't want to get any paint up in here in the neck pocket. Now I'm going to take my sandpaper and I'm going to sand this by hand because the block ain't going to fit in there. But as you notice, I've only been sanding this for less than five minutes. So get that and it's all already done. Down and ready to paint. I wash it off, I wipe it down, get all the water off it. And uh, I have an air compressor so I'm going to blow it off. Make sure it's thoroughly dry, but before you paint it you want to make sure it's very dry. You don't want to just wipe it off and think it's ready to paint. And no, the water ain't going to hurt your wood. You're not keeping it. It's not like you're soaking it. Okay. So we get that all dried off. Okay, I got it all sanded down. I got it all dried off. I got the 54 Fender Esquire cutout, Jeff Beck style. I don't know if you can see that. The lighting's kind of bad in here. Okay, and uh, now we're ready to stain that wood so it's got a black tint to it. And I'm going to use paint. DBC base coat paint. And all we're going to do is tint the wood. See there? You've got to have black to do this type of paint job. Now I'm just going to get some of these edges here. Okay, and when this thing's uh, painted it's gold, it's going to be badass, man. All I'm doing is just tinting it so it's black so the sparkle paint will be evident. Basically what we got. Now, as you see, it's all tinted black. Actually it looks pretty cool that way there. But uh, we're not gonna go. We're gonna go the step ten steps farther. So let me get the paint ready. We're gonna go in the other room. We're gonna paint it in there. This shit here is a mess, okay? And yeah, I can't paint it in my paint booth. I got a paint booth, it'll contaminate it. So I got a setup going on over here. We're gonna paint it. So let me get all the paint ready. I gotta mix it up, put it in an agitator cup, and we're gonna paint that guitar sparkle gold. Okay, yeah, what we got that. here is we got our, I'm gonna move this very carefully because there's already flakes. Okay, we got our gold flake. This is a special agitator cup that I use. And what it does, that hooks up to your, that little baby there, <clears throat> hooks up to your air hose. And uh, right there, so you can get this piece right here, inside, it what it looks down, like. It if you look down inside there. Okay, what I did is I mixed, I poured the contents of the sparkle inside. Then I took the DBC 500 which is actually an inner coat clear. And that's urethane base. And I also added some reducer to it to thin it out. And the reducer actually makes it settle and dry faster. So now we're gonna take a paint stick, like so. 
And we're just going to lightly stir that up just to break it up. And as you can see on the stick, it's pretty thick. And all I'm doing really, I'm just mixing it up. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some I'm going to take some DX73 fisheye remover and I'm going to put one cap full in it with it. Now you can buy all these supplies over at you know, your local paint and bodies to shop. Okay. But anyway, I get that mixed up where it's half ass and it's pretty thick. Okay. I don't know if you can see that coming off the stick. But we want to be very careful okay, not to do this we round. Okay, got our paint mix. We'll get there it is right there. Got my gun set up. We're going to walk in here. And like I said, I got a body shop. Now, this is a wall. It's an exhaust wall that's in my body shop. And as you see, there's our guitar right there. Okay, I got it hanging up in front of the fan. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint that guitar. Okay. I'm getting ready to paint that guitar. Now, as you see, let me back up here. I always wear a mask when you're doing this. Okay. Now, I usually wear a paint suit, but it's 10.30 at night. And when I get done painting this thing, I'm fucking going home taking a shower. I'm tired. I've been here since 5 o'clock this morning. So we worked on our guitar for, let's see, we started at 6 o'clock, 6, 7, 8, 9. We've already worked on it for four hours, just to the stage that we're at right now. So I'm getting ready to paint it. You can hear the fan in the background. That's an exhaust fan to suck all the fumes. I got my uh, agitator hooked up, the sparkomatics in there. And uh, let's see what happens. Notice there's a sparkle, and that's going to be a bad motherfucker when we 